Hey, what's up, Garnet? Fr wow, freaking wind. Very windy, whatever. Just gonna go with it. Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It was at the end of last week's video, I had a whole nother portion of video that I cut out of it because it just it didn't really fit and I didn't have time to edit that portion of the video. So this video is going to start with what was supposed to be the end of that video. And then there's a random break where a whole entire week passes. I was out of town. I was away for a friend's wedding. I just didn't have time to film a video for Wednesday and it would have been really confusing had I done that. So it just would have ended up splitting things between the end of the last vlog with this video right here. And it, that's why there is no Wednesday video. It doesn't matter. So that's what's going on there. Probably going to be an awkward video, but that's all right. Not mic'd up. Also, you can't see what's over here. My microphone broke. You will see why later in the video. My phone's sitting in a pot of dirt right now. That's probably not smart considering what happened to it. Go ahead and get to the actual video now. And I'm home. Smooth transition? Probably not, because you can probably tell I'm in a different car. And it's a week later. The video is a little too short. I was editing it last night and I was like, this is going to come out to like 30 minutes and I know people are going to want something a little bit longer. So I figured I'd update with what's been going on since that whole thing ended with the puppy and the gardening in their yard and get a little bit more going on of what's happening here, especially since things started off so gloomy and boring and sad. And uh, I have a bunch of plants in the backyard. Whole bunch of things to show. You see what's going on back there? That was fun. Those were a lot of fun to get into the car. I have a pimple patch on, don't judge me. Espaliers. And they're really, you probably want to see them when I'm not in the car. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? It, it's a good thing that window rolls down. People are always saying you should get a truck. I don't need one. As long as I can roll the back window down, everything's fine. It, kind of. I'm going to get these unloaded. We can talk about them a little bit. Getting them out of here, that's going to be a trick. Getting them out, not as easy as putting them in. Pick them up and slide them on in there. And this one was not potted. That's like straight out the fields. So I might just flip the root ball out and repot it myself. That one's a little bit more sturdy. With palm trees, which is usually what's sticking out of here, they're flexible. So I can usually just open the hatch and the fronds will fall down on their own. These I'm actually, I'm gonna have to actually pull these out, like lift the pots back. I can do it. We can go in the backyard, see some things. Mm-hmm, yep, that was easy, no problem. See, I told you those things weren't even potted in those things they were freshly dug and just shoved into some containers with some backfill backfill that's mostly mulch so that made it not so difficult to get them out i'm gonna repot these and get them around to the backyard now they're so pretty never mind the mess this is all gonna go here in a couple weeks i love them so much Last year, I saw some espaliers at a nursery that's out here, and uh, I fell in love. And I've seen espaliers before. Oh, I got a new umbrella. The green is a bit intense, but it's just, it's going to have to do. The blue, the Aruba blue that goes with all the cushions and everything that's out here, I can't find it. Apparently that color's out of style now. I don't know, whatever. It actually, it looks pretty cool. I don't mind it. It's, it's fine. It has a high UV blocking rating. That's really all I cared about. So the espaliers. I've always wanted some. Last year saw some at a local nursery and really, really liked it. But it was like, I think it was $3,500, something like that. It was just astronomically expensive, which makes sense. They take a lot of time to make, and they were nicer than these, much nicer. Probably a good four feet taller, and they were already garsed out and looking nice. And they were trained up onto some trellises, and they had some magnolia spalliers that were really nice. That, I don't need to go into all that. I've wanted some for a long time. Saw some last year at a local nursery and that got my wheel spinning as to where I would put them and I have several ideas. And things have changed out here this year. There's a lot more light than there used to be with the neighbors having cleared their landscaping. All the trees that were up there on the hill are gone now because they're putting in a pool. And something I forgot to mention in the garden tour, yes, there are others, I, I moved some plants out too. A lot's happened since the last video. The maple tree got a massive, massive prune, as you can see there. I had talked last year about cutting it down and then had the tree people over and they're like, well, why don't we just give it a heavy prune for now and then think on that? Because I just, I hate cutting down trees. Yeah, in the long run, probably should just cut it down. The issue is that it's too close to the house. The branches were all over the roof and pushing up against the siding. It needed to be planted out probably another eight to 10 feet away from the foundation just to keep things 
safe. But anyways, it had a nice prune that'll keep it smaller for several more years. And for the first time in like five years, there's going to be a good amount of sun over here again. It's been a while. It used to be I had all kinds of really pretty... I mean, I still do the tropicals over here, but just don't get the growth out of them that I used to. And I used to have orchids that I would hang in the tree over here. Orchids that like a good amount of sun. And uh, just couldn't do it because the maple tree got so big it was shading everything. But that's not going to be a problem anymore because it's been cut back. And actually, they did a really good job cutting it back too. They kept a nice shape to it. Looks like they left mostly healthy branches. There might still be a few that need to go on there, but that's okay. They got rid of all the ones that were looking bad from all the storms over the years and whatnot. So, yeah, that's the whole point. There's going to be more sun out here than there used to be. So I had originally thought with the espaliers that those would need to go on each side of the fence. Where I really always wanted to put one is right underneath that window on the side of the garage, right behind that magnolia, and have an espalier on that wall. I don't think an apple would be the way to go because it's fruiting and they can be messy and there's not a lot of airflow over there once all the bananas and everything have grown up for the year. You wouldn't even really be able to see it that much. It would need to be, uh, like, this is like, I'm just daydreaming here because it would need to be something that I would probably have to train myself over many years, which isn't going to happen because I don't plan on living here for many years, but I think that would look really cool. For now, the magnolia is going to do. That's going to at least triple in size hopefully over the next 10 years or so we will see and that will fill that spot in nicely so the espalier could go on each side of the fence gates down there i have some great spots up here on the hill for the espaliers what i really want to do is put them on the edge of the hot tub to add some privacy but that's a whole thing i'll have to talk about when i get into redoing this area over here there's a lot to explain the whole point is there's a lot of possibilities and opportunities you might want to i'm not going to talk too much about the espaliers specifically other than they're apples there's a honey crisp and a gala needed to get the two types that they will pollinate if you want fruit off of them then you need to do that these aren't self-pollinating types they only had two honey crisps there and the other one would didn't have any grafts in the middle so it's just top and bottom so i was like well that's not going to work i want to make sure that they have the three rows going across each way and then the gala was well, just a gala the other option was i think a macintosh which i'm not really crazy about and uh, a liberty which i'm not familiar with and i didn't feel like doing much research on how compatible they would be for the most part if they're apples they'll be compatible with each other but still i knew that the gala and i double checked would be good with the honey crisp i love a honey crisp apple i think they're delicious galas are okay i guess i haven't had i don't eat a ton of apples that's the other thing i think they're really pretty and i like the way they smell i like the way real apples smell not like fake candle -y apples but real apples i don't eat a lot of them but they look nice and i can cut them up and feed them to the pets i have family and friends that i can give them to it's just fun to have some fruiting plants in the backyard i think the only fruiting plant tree that i would grow something that i would actually eat would probably be an apricot maybe a peach I like those and I like apricots, but I also really just like apple trees when they're cared for nicely and they have a good shape to them. They can be big, they can be messy trees, and I don't have the space for all that. That's why espalier to me was the way to go with that. Just keep them pruned how you want them. I will more than likely have to add support over the years if I were to want to let them continue to grow out further and further and further, which I may do depending on where they get planted. Again, those are all things to talk about when they get planted up. We're just covering some new plants right now, and these plants, which I'm very excited about. So excited about. I'm really happy about the espaliers. Also, some tubers begonias. Okay, the all right. I'm seeing a problem here with the green umbrella. It's giving things a kind of an interesting tint, isn't it? Well, this isn't permanent anyways. This is just an in-between umbrella until I can get the other one replaced with the warranty and everything. It's I what would it, it's it's a rebound. It's not going to be around long. It's just an in-between. It's just to hold things over until the good one gets here. It's a tuberous begonia, the non-stop type that are very heavy flowerers. <laughs> they flower abundantly, very floriferous. It has a nice corally shaped, corally colored flower on it and some lighter pinks in there as well. I just, it was one of those things where I saw it and I was like, I really want that. I always get one tuberous begonia every single year and they get powdery mildew. That's just, it's kind of the nature of the beast with these in my yard. Things are just too wet. Those fungal spores grow like crazy with all the wetness. Also, uh, a few impatience. Went and stocked up on those early, about a month early. I don't usually get going on the impatience in the landscaping until mid-May, 
but I'm just, I don't feel like waiting this year. I'm rolling the dice. We're just doing it. The nurseries have the summer annuals out. I have been exercising so much control over the last few years as to waiting to move the plants out and waiting to get summer annuals in the ground. Partially just to set a good example. Practice what you preach, right? I'm not doing that this year. Yes, you should wait till you're past your last frost date. The thing is here, my last frost date is like April 15th, somewhere in there. But sometimes it snows in late April and early May. Like, you just don't know. And I have tons of frost cloth. The ground is warm. That's what matters. And I'm in no way an inexperienced person when it comes to protecting plants if we have a sudden cold snap. I'm going to try and get those in the ground hopefully next week. I do, I'm going to give it one more week, see the extended forecast. If it's looking like we're going to have a cold snap at the end of the month, then I will hold off and just move these inside during that cold snap and then get them in the ground. So far it's not looking like that's going to happen, but it's too soon to tell. And that's why uh, when it comes to moving plants outside, I haven't moved much out. I talked about this in the last video how uh, I don't mind moving some of the bigger plants out because they're actually a lot easier to move inside than all the little plants. So I went ahead and I brought the croton out because it takes a while for it to get adjusted to the light. And by mean adjusted to the light, shocked by the sun, drop those leaves and put out new ones. I figured get on it a month early and then it's gonna look better a month earlier than it normally would. And the Eureka Palm, because same thing. Also, it was just, it's too big for the garage, so I needed to get it out of there. It just needed to be done. I needed to get it out of the grow space. That and uh, Easter Sunday, you know, just happened and I had family over and we were all eating out here and it just, it felt so bare. I need to get a few more plants out and really just having that Eureka Palm out here makes a huge difference. And it's going to go through the thing where it throws a fit about the light and I have to cut the fronds off and then it pushes out new ones. So again, just like the Croton, it's a month early. Yes, you're supposed to harden them off. I don't really have the shade to harden off the big plants until mid-May. That's another reason that I've just said, screw it, I'm bringing them out. The Croton, I've started, blah, blah. <laughs> the Croton, I started doing that with a few years ago. I used to slowly harden it off and get it used to the sun. I would take it from the shade and slowly, every couple weeks, move it into more light. And then it would still end up scorching and dropping leaves. So a couple years ago, I said, you know what, forget it. You're just, you're going right into the sun. You're going to scorch, you're going to drop leaves, and you're going to push out new ones, and everything's going to be fine. And it has been. I mean, this thing's huge. It's been doing okay. But that's it of the big plants. It was just the Croton and the Eureka Palm. The Impatience, I, well, I told you why I jumped on it. Also, last year, I had trouble finding colors that I liked. So when I saw them, I went ahead and I just, just said I'd go ahead and get them so that I don't even have to worry about that now. I have the impatience ready to go in the landscaping down here and over here, and probably some in the front yard as well. And I, there have been some changes over here. This may have turned into a garden tour. It wasn't intentional. Got a whole bunch of ranunculus planted up here underneath the spring grove, arborvitaes, arborvitaes, whatever you want, arborvitaes. <laughs> Nobody calls them that. Grove arbs, lots of ranunculus planted up underneath them. Again, just had to get that done. People coming over for the holiday and wanted things to look nice out here, needed some color, and this is something I've wanted to do for a while, just nice, simple, elegant flowers with the green backdrop. I think that looks really nice. Also the tulips started doing their thing here underneath the peach trees. They're red, which isn't normally my go-to, but they're a frilly type, which is fun. Look at the inside of that. That's cool. And then the coral, not sudden, what, my brain stopped. Knockout roses, the coral knockout rose. You know, people, they get kind of snitty about landscape roses. I don't really understand why. They have a purpose. They're easy to grow. They're low maintenance. They flower continuously. I say why not. I, I'm not on board with people kind of dumping on them. But there's the little, like, spring display I set up, which would look nicer if the lighting were better. But not a cloud in the sky, so what can you do? Not a cloud in the sky and a lot of pollen. It's starting to feel it. Also, I grabbed one orange dahlia that I think is just the cutest, prettiest little dahlia I've ever seen in my life. I named it Marmalade to get back under the umbrella. The sun's really intense. I have sunscreen on, but it's just, it's, I can feel it like doing the thing to my skin, that burning. Not good. Don't want that. It was just, they had more. I just, it was one little orange dahlia and I had to, I don't know why. I just had to get it. It was too cute to not get. It's like just the right shade of orange. A nice, light creamy with a hint of pink light almost coral kind of orange that's my jam and i think we're caught up on everything it's nice to be outside happy to have the plants out like i said by the middle of next week be able to make some decisions as to whether or not to move more things out which it's 
looking like it should be okay to go ahead and move some more plants out here. Oh, and there's some double pink knockout roses over here, which are nice. I don't think I'm keeping those. Those are going to be used for someone else more than likely. But it, but I, I don't know. I actually really like them. There's so much sun over here. And roses are a nice potted perennial. You have to work on them every few years, freshen the soil and do some pruning on them. But they flush out early. So it's not like you have to wait until May or June to get some leaves on them. And they usually start flowering fairly early too when there's still some cooler nights. And the more floriferous types, the newer types, the landscape types, they'll just go and go and go all summer. I'm kind of liking that pop of color over here. And I'm just, I don't, I know that it's going to be a different story once all the tropicals are over here. But right now, I'm enjoying the pink. And I'd probably enjoy it more if this area were cleaned up. But like I said, that's a project that's going to wait a couple weeks. Because waiting for some things to come in the mail. And he's wet. That didn't take long. Things have been really, really, really busy. All the plants that are out here are things I've been grabbing when I've been running to the store to grab other things for projects, construction things going on in the house. So I've been like, okay, I need to get a little can of paint to touch up some 2 by 4s that are going to go behind something. I should grab some impatience while I'm here. That's how it's been. In fact, I saw the espaliers yesterday when I was at Home Depot picking up some stuff for a project that's going on in the reconstructing in the living room. And I was like, well, I can't get those. I need to get back with the supplies. So I ran back this morning to grab those. I wish I knew what kind of trees these were, this would be really good stuff to work with for making like a nice perch for the parrot to play on, but I have no idea. Oh, uh, it's several days later. Things got busy, you know, the wedding, all that stuff was gone all weekend. I haven't done much outside because the forecast has been weird. It's 84 degrees right now and absolutely glorious outside. But I think tomorrow night, no, the night after, it's supposed to be like 33 and then 34. So feeling like summer, want to bring the plants outside, but going to have to wait at least one more week, which is okay. Not the end of the world. Very different from what I was thinking was going to happen next week. I'm looking down there and I can see the Eureka palm blew over, which has never happened before. That palm tree's never blown over. I really, really, really hope that pot didn't break. It's my favorite container that I've probably ever had. My favorite pot. The, this right here, honeysuckles that were on top of the hill. I removed those, cut them down. There was a random volunteer tree growing inside of one of them. So that's what I was talking about with the wood that I need to dispose of getting that cut up, put into the yard waste and we'll be replanting up there eventually. I don't know when, but at some point, I, I'm really curious about that Eureka palm pot. I'm gonna go have a look at that. Should finish this, but I wanna know what happened to my pot. Please, 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 don't be broken. Uh, this side of it's not broken, so that's good. I don't know about this side, and I'm not going to bother picking it up when it's this windy, not until I figure out something to stack on the other side of it to hold it up, because it'll just, it's just gonna blow over again, right? It's gonna have to hang out there. I'm thinking it's okay, though. If three of the sides are good and one side's bad, I can glue that back together. That's not the end of the world. Sorry I didn't get a video out on Wednesday, by the way, that it just wasn't going to work. Because I started this video with what was supposed to be the end of last week's video, but I cut that out of last week's video because it just, it didn't need to be there. Like, we started things off fine, plant shopping, planting some stuff up at my sister's house. Didn't need that additional stuff with the espaliers and the impatience. But then it didn't make sense to me to release a video in between that video and then this video without something to join it. It just, it, it wasn't working for me. So I said, forget it and just have one more week where there's not a Wednesday video, not the end of the world. All I was gonna do is talk about pulling the mulch off your banana trees because people keep asking me when you can pull it off and the answer is just it, whenever, you don't have to rub frost anymore. That's it, more to it than that, but that's the gist of it. It was going to be a short video anyways. Maybe it'll come out next week, I don't know. Hey, baby, he's worn out. He's had a good time at the dog park today. What was I? Do? Oh, yeah, I need to cut that stuff up for the yard waste. That goes out tonight. Yes, tonight. Got to get that out of here. Oh, and the pool's up and running. That wasn't in the beginning of the video, was it? Shouldn't have been. Don't think it was. That's going now. So the water's all cleared up, full of junk from the maple trees, but 
least it's clear, which is nice. Have the hose running because it got kind of low. The air is really dry. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do for the rest of this video because with the forecast doing what it's doing, I can't move more plants out. I don't. I have some things I want to plant, but I need to do some research. I'm gonna talk to the neighbors too because I want to plant some Paris K Magnolias, K Paris Magnolia, whichever one those are up there on top of the hill, but I need to find out where their pool is going to be set because, well, tree roots. I don't want to plant a tree up there and then have the roots go in and bust through the walls of it years later. That wouldn't be very considerate of me, and they're kind of hard to find. The only nursery around here that sells them, they're very expensive, so I'm also going to explore some other options because they get big and they're very expensive, and I don't know why, because they grow really fast, but that's just, that's just the way things are. Yeah, I would at the very least like to get those espaliers over there planted, the ones from the beginning of the video. They've been here for exactly a week, even though they were pulled completely from their potty mix. I just realized that this, this whole rocking thing, that might be making people dizzy, so I'm going to calm down on that. They've been here for a week. You saw they got pulled out from their containers. They were, like, freshly dug and just stuffed into some pots with some mulch uh, or whatever. That planting media that they have, by the way, full of tiny little thorns. Have you ever had the prickly pear cactus? They have what they're called glockids. Tiny, tiny little hair-like thorns. I was covered in those for like three days after that. I've still been like occasionally plucking them out of my body and I've vacuumed the back of the car several times. When I roll the windows down, they fly around and I find them. On my not thrilled with that. Don't know what that's about. But I, I want to get those planted. I did pop the... I should get up and walk so you can see what it is that I'm talking about over here. I pulled up one of the honeysuckles and transplanted it over here. Doesn't it just like great? Not really. Not much of the roots came out with it either. I'm keeping it really wet. I should cut it back to probably being about a foot or so tall to get to push its roots out. That would be the smart thing to do. I just kind of wanted to see how it would drape and it's, well, it's draping. But the espaliers, one there, one there on each side of the gate, I think would look really cool. And I have the honeysuckles on the back of the fence. I already have a major wheel or uh, major wheel or honeysuckle that was planted last year that's coming up very strongly on this fence right here. I planted one on both sides, but the one on this side didn't come back. So I don't know what that's about. I can buy another one for like 10 bucks and pop it over here just in case that one doesn't do well. It's looking like it may not. But I bet those espaliers will be very quick to go into the ground. Good sized trees, but didn't have much on them as far as roots go. None of that's happening right now anyways. It's the end of the day. Gotta get the yard waste taken out. I'm gonna watch the forecast tomorrow. Hopefully we'll pop back, maybe plant a couple apple trees. I don't know. I also have some other ideas, maybe some other spots I might want to put them. So I have to make my mind up on that. It's just kind of depends on how low the lower growth is on them and how well they're going to fit here. That's been the idea for a long time. Well, really I wanted them centered over there underneath that window, but that doesn't make sense with the magnolia that's going to grow there, and this is... You've seen what this looks like in the summertime, right? You, you see that? That's, I you never see them over there. Just get full of bugs. Over here, a different spot makes more sense. Welcome to the next day. There's There are things going on out here. A little bit windy. Brand new umbrella, nine days old. That just broke. It's not, it's not that windy. Why is nobody making umbrellas that can handle a gentle breeze? Need to figure that out. Brought the nice camera out that pulled the table and flipped that onto the ground. Don't know if it works or not. I know that the transmitter's broken, so don't have a microphone to use. That just that just cost me like 350 or 400 bucks. Hopefully the camera still works. I'm gonna come on. I really wasn't that big of a fan with the green, anyways. So whatever. I can return it. It's really, it's not, like, there's very gentle breeze. I have umbrellas in my attic from 2007 from Walmart. Perfectly fine. They have some tears in them because they're old, but this has never happened. Why is nobody's making things that last anymore? I can't use the Walmart ones on this table because they're only seven foot umbrellas and the table is six feet across. It really, it just, it would be completely pointless and they wouldn't come up very high, so you'd have to, like, duck and crawl to get underneath them. It just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, I can return that. Table didn't break. Everything's fine. The, uh, why did I pick up? Oh, new plants. They're right here. Yeah. New plants. Not looking too hot. That happens sometimes when you have things shipped when the weather is unpredictable. I actually think it got too hot 
which is not something that happens all that often this time of year, but that's all right. They should be fine. Have a uh, Heliconia here, Cynthia. These are both from Yebrahms on Etsy and an Alpinia Vitata, which is this one right there. I was going to pop them up and do a whole thing talking about them, but I don't think I have a way to hook this camera to the tripod and still run audio. I have to hold this one fairly close to my face for anybody to hear what I'm saying, because I don't have a, a tra- yeah. hmm. I'm gonna figure this out. Audio? Is this going to work? Looks like the bars are moving. Have autofocus, that's still working. Yes, I think everything's okay, except that this is no longer attached to the top of my camera. So I'm still gonna have to get a new one. Right now it's just, it's just swinging in the wind, which could be a problem for the audio. But better than everything being broken, although I won't really know until I go to edit this. This could all just be a bunch of gray fuzz on the computer screen. I have no idea. Just gonna hope for the best. Now that all that drama's over with, Couple new plants, the Vitata right here and the Heliconia Sidericorum Cynthia. The Vitatas, they're an interesting Alpinia, similar to the Zaremba, but they have a more, uh, well, a more typical green and a white variegation on them. They also have a slightly more of an upright growth to them, a slightly more of an, uh, that makes sense. They don't always fan out the same way a Zarumba does. They usually get taller, they tend to have more of kind of a wild look to them unless, you know, you've been doing a good job growing them in just the right spot where they're not getting blown around and broken too terribly much. When grown in a container and they hit the sides of those containers, you tend to get a lot more concentrated growth. Sorry, I'm trying to get my brain back <laughs> into where it's supposed to be after all that stuff happened over there with the umbrella. And now there's leaf blowers going. That doesn't bother me. Hopefully it doesn't bother y'all either because that's just the joys of being outside. I love the Zarembits. I think that they are some of the most beautiful tropical plants that are out there. But I thought I'd give something else a try here. I haven't grown the Vitatas in a long, 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 long time. Like, probably not since I was a teenager. Is the leaf blower too loud? Should I hold off just a few minutes and come back? I think I might do that. Okay, think they're done. I'm gonna get some soil thrown into some containers to use to get these potted up. The thing I like about the Vitata is that they have a appearance very similar to the Hedicium Tahitian flame. Yes, Tahitian flame, or is it torch? I think it's flame. Now, I have the flaming torches out here, so sometimes I mix those up, but it's just a variegated Hedicium, which I really like, but I don't know if mine survived the winter. It would be a shame if they didn't, because I've had them for a long time. But, well, the ones I had outside in the garden, we had a really bad winter. And I'm not seeing any action out of those yet. And the ones that were inside in the grow space, camera's not centered, that's great. It was pretty warm and humid in there this year because of all the new fun fancy aeroids. And I, I just, ugh, I don't know. Usually I'm seeing action out of them by now, but I'm not seeing anything yet. I think that it was maybe too warm and humid in there for them to get their proper dormancy. Weren't anything crazy rare and exotic that variegated Hedicium, not always the easiest to find, not the Tahitian one anyways. I can still probably replace it. It was from Terra Nova, but they don't, I can't get their plants online anymore. And I don't see them around the nurseries all that often. So this Heliconia here, it's a fun one. It's a dwarf, supposedly. You know, they send these dwarfs sometimes with these great big stalks on them, and I wonder how small they actually are. But it's listed as one that stays smaller with a pink flower on it, and I just thought I'd give it a try. Ideally, we wouldn't be having a cool down right now, and I would have just been popping these in the ground, but it's all right. It's only gonna be for a few days, looking like Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night, gonna be in the low 30s. Well, upper, 30, uh, well, upper 30s. Friday night and then lower 30s, Saturday and Sunday. So I am going to have to move a lot of things inside. All these impatience, I'll probably pull inside. The Areca Palm, it's handled cold before. I'll probably just pop it up and lean it over this way onto the patio and throw a frost cloth over it. Seems less risky than moving it because I don't want to break that container. And the Croton, it can handle very brief cold. I'm not worried about that one either. It's already defoliated as it is just from throwing a fit from being moved outside. I thought that this would work right here, but if you can see that, that's, I need to go find a bigger pot. I think this will do. I saved a bunch of the mum pots from, really? It's an eight inch container. I might just make it fit because it's only going to be in this container for like two weeks, if even. That's not going to be in there for very long. I'm going to be 
putting this in the ground just because I'm not feeling all that patient and the heliconias tend to take off faster when you get them into the ground. I'd been watching this one on the site and the, the numbers kept dwindling and it got down to saying they only had one left. Maybe they've restocked by now. But at the time it said there was only one left. So I was like, okay, I'll order it. Otherwise I would have waited another couple of weeks to have bothered with this because then I wouldn't have to pull these into the growth space and have to deal with them indoors. At least with the rhizomes, it's not ideal to be constantly changing their conditions. It's good to go ahead and get them up into whatever they prefer and let them stay that way. But you know, whatever, here we are. I think that this will be fine. Not ideal for it to be pushed up against the side, but I'm not putting this thing in a 10 inch container when it's only going to be in it for like a week or two. You can see I'm not even going to be putting that much soil on this either. Well, I guess it's going to end up being nearly full since I have to cover up that little shoot there. But I don't want it in a deep container because I want that soil to warm up quickly and easily in the growth space to help get it going. It'll stay it moist more evenly if it's not you know spread up and down further where there's nothing going on. You saw that, there are no roots on there. It doesn't need to be in a deep pot. And uh, the next size up in containers I have are all like normal nursery containers. So it'd just be a lot of soil. I guess I could have put it down in the butt. It's fine. It's only for a couple weeks. No reason to overthink it. I have a bunch of can of rhizomes inside. I'm wondering if I should grab those and get those going too. Or I could just wait a week and put them right in the ground. That would probably be smarter, right? That's what I should do. I was thinking about repotting marmalade over here, but I'm thinking the weather's turning, so I should probably hold off on that. I've also been wondering if I should, should I get more marmalades? Because here's the, okay. The two blue ripple pots, one right here with the bonfire peach. There's another one over there with the bonfire peach. Both of those will be in the driveway on each side of the gate that comes back here. That's where those will go during the summertime. And I'm just gonna pop a Vista bubblegum petunia, one of these you know, bubblegum pink ones right there in the front of each of those containers. So I wanna keep it simple. But might, it, it could look cool to put a whole row of marmalades around each one. The thing with dahlias is, is I can't really grow them back here. I, it looks sunny right now because it is. The trees haven't flushed out. And there will be more sun in the backyard this year than in years past because of the neighbors clearing their lawn and me having done a major prune on that maple tree back there. But I don't want to overdo it with my hopes of having a full sun backyard. I don't think that's going to be the case. The sun will be still blocked by this maple and this oak and all these taller trees during the summertime when it's just like down, it's like down there. So uh, as much as I would love to plant a whole bunch of dahlias back here, it's just, the, I think those days are over, but the driveway gets a lot of sun. I have two containers in the driveway. I could go ahead and maybe just grab a couple more of these, throw in those pots. It's also very, much reminiscent of a marigold. So am I maybe being a little bit ridiculous about how much I like this dahlia? It's just, it's the shade of orange. I like that shade of orange. Got the orange and the yellow in there. It's a nice looking dahlia. Only gets eight to 10 inches high. So a row of those going around each one of those might look nice with the pink coming down or really a purple petunia would look even better. But I already bought the bubblegum vistas. So maybe I should stick with, I could get purple instead though and put, welcome, Chances are what's going to happen for the next few minutes is just me, me rambling about plants. So sit back and enjoy or go away. I don't care. It doesn't make a difference to me. With there being more sun on each side of the steps over there where I would take the camera over there and talk about it where you can see it better. But it just, it looks right into the back of the neighbor's house and it feels really awkward over there right now. It's a staircase. There's a wall on each side. I think it might be cool if there's enough height in the garden bed there on each side to put some Vista bubble gums to come over each corner there assuming there's enough sun i think there will be but i don't know the nice thing about the vista petunias is they tend to grow and grow and grow even if they're in part sun sometimes even part shade they're just going to be more leggy not quite as full so i could put those on each side of those steps i'd probably do like three on each side though just so it'd be a really grand show of those. This is all just me leading up to, I kind of, I want to go to Lowe's. <laughs> Next week, probably going to be going to a lot of nurseries, uh, Sugar Creek Gardens. I placed an order from them a long time ago that should be ready to pick up, a plant order that is, that should be ready to pick up, I think the 23rd or 24th, something like that. So all those plants will be coming back here. It's mostly perennials, but there are a few tropicals and some cool plants that, they're all cool, but some more bold statement plants, but it's going to be mostly perennials. And then uh, hopefully they'll have the boxwoods that I want to plant up there. I did 
okay, I talked about the magnolias up there. The reasoning for that is that the Paris K, K Paris, whichever one it is, seems to be doing well. I have a couple of them in part sun growing like champs. And from what I've read, they don't need quite as much full sun to have a nice shape to them. They get like 20 feet tall, which I, I'm on the fence with believing that. I, that's what most websites say, but they're pr more than likely, it's hypothesized that they're a cross between the little gem over there, which up against the house right there, which will get 20 to 30 feet tall, even bigger than that the further south you go, and the Bracken's Brown, which will easily get 30 feet tall. Here, where I live in St. Louis, we usually have a bad winter every 10 to 15 years that knock them back. So it would be a long time till they would ever get to be that size, but putting trees on each side of the steps that get 20 feet tall, that's probably a bad idea, regardless of how close it would be to the neighbor's pool, right? Also realize, as I was saying, that being concerned about planting magnolia too close to their pool so the roots won't damage it. And I planted one right there. I think it'll be okay though. I'm not really all that concerned about it. There's a type of boxwood that I've been thinking about for a couple years that would look nice up there. I think it's called mountain tower. It might be called green tower. They can grow like 15 to 18 inches a year. So it's a very fast growing boxwood. They stay more slender. They get like nine feet tall. So it'd be something evergreen that's not going to fill in that space too much. You know, maybe I shouldn't talk about them too much and just wait and see if they have them. If they have them, I'll buy them and then we can talk about them. I'd love to plant banana trees up there because how cool would that look having just giant clumps of bananas on each side of those pots. But again, still not certain about the sun situation over there. And I don't want more bananas that need to be cut down and mulched in the winter. And I don't think they do well up there during the winter either with one whole side being exposed. I'm talking fast because I think there might be a storm rolling in. So I'm just trying to get it all out while I can. Okay, well, now everybody knows what's going on in my head with the top of the stairs, those honeysuckles. I've been talking about moving for a few years. Those are gone now. It's on the gate over there. The other one on the other side, I, there weren't a lot of roots to get up with it. So I just didn't worry about it. I think we talked about that. This, I am going to go get some more and I will pair them up with maybe wave petunias. They have some lighter purples that I think would look really nice with this orange, grab some more Supertunia Vista bubble gums next week, go to the nursery, pick up some plants, and I uh, also need to go to Weethop. Haven't been there yet this year. You get all those sun impatience to border the garden. I like to get them from them. They usually have them nice and big. That's where I prefer to go with those. The other location for the espaliers, well, I think I talked about that I was going to talk about them, but hadn't done, I don't know. So back here, this little area is going to be gutted in the next couple of weeks. I need to cut back all the dead foliage on those hydrangeas. What's happening over here? What's, you get, what's wrong with you? What's going on? It's like the pool cleaner is stuck, having itself a bit of a whiz on the patio. Okay, all right, easily distracted, sorry. The espaliers might be fun up here on top of this hill. The problem though, is that I'm also thinking that I would like to plant arbs up here. I would do two per fence section. They should be three feet apart. That'd be roughly three feet apart. I would need like one, two, three, four, or five. I'd need about six of them to fill this space in because I don't expect these pine trees to be all that long lasting. It seems like every year we lose one to a bad storm and it would be nice to get something started down here that will last longer and not blow over whenever there's a bad storm. And I'd like to fill that spot in. Arbs don't get very big. This is only about five and a half, six feet of space to work with up here. So if the arbs were flat against the fence, then I would have to bring the espaliers fairly far forward. And that might still be okay. It actually might even be sort of fun to have them closer to the front here because in, from down here, would be looking up at the apples. And they're so open that I could still plant around them and hopefully not have to mess with the natives and pollinator plants that I have over here. This is mostly all plants for pollinators over here. It would bring some uniformity to the area and I think it'd be fun. The apple blossoms would be fun to smell. You're sitting out here during the springtime. Yeah, it's just a thought. I know, probably shouldn't have bought them if I didn't know what I was gonna do with them, but I've always wanted them. But I viewed it as I had so many ideas, why wouldn't I buy them, right? I wanted to buy more. But those are the only two that I really like the appearance on. So that's why I got those. So I'm not gonna plant them yet. I'm gonna wait for everybody's feedback. I'm kind of like an idea of up here on the hill with the backdrop of the arbs. I think that'd be good. I'd be fine with that. I know it's not looking great. That's just, you know, winter. Okay, that was fun. All caught up. Let's go to Lowe's. Oh, uh, that's better. Not bad. I, everything's fine. I'm not that upset about the fan situation. Those things, they just happen. Buy garbage sometimes. Past couple weeks have been so chaotic and busy. Feels good to see plants. 
Not sure how the weather's gonna hold up. It got very breezy. Was not breezy when the umbrella broke. But it's starting to get there. I almost took the other car because I was thinking about going by Home Depot and getting some arbs. They have them for a good price. But I didn't because I genuinely wanted some feedback on that to an extent. I'm probably gonna plant them up there on the hill regardless. I don't know what the Bordeaux might be too dark for a purple. I like a light creamy kind of purple, so just like this. This this is perfect. That looks pink on camera, but it's not. Doesn't say what kind of verbena it is. I was hoping it would so I could pop a picture up on the screen so you could see what it looks like, so really it's looking pink here. Through the lens, that is, in person. It's a very nice light purple, like a lilac, lavender purple. Almost like these Betty Blue Bacopas. That looks a little bit more purple on camera. This is more blue than I want. Yes, I know, I'm kind of picky. Nothing wrong with being aware of your preferences, even though sometimes it might make shopping take a little bit longer. Uh, yeah, maybe. These are blue. That's not purple. $10 for a six pack. That seems kind of steep. I guess it's better than the proven winners. Those are six bucks a piece. Well, so are these. Hmm. I wish they would label these so I'd know what color they are so that if they're not looking right when I edit the video, I can pop them up on the screen, but no idea. It's dark purple. And you know, verbena really would be a great option for those containers. It's really hot in the driveway. I think they do well there, but those weren't labeled. So I don't know how to find those outside of just getting those drop and grows. And I don't think I want the drop and grows. Eh, I don't know. Okay. Music playing in the background, hold the mic right up to my face so video doesn't get struck. Is that, aren't these beautiful? The sunbelievable sunflowers? Wouldn't that be beautiful underneath some of the espalier apple trees with the dark green from the arbs behind them? Just fill the hill up with all kinds of little pollinators underneath them. That would look really neat. What is big pink green leaf begonia? Who are you? What do you do? You just one of the grande dragon wing begonias? That would be my guess. Lots of noise. No orange dahlias. So <laughs> this, is, this is all for nothing. Maybe not all for nothing. I don't know. I can find something else. Surprise, though, I didn't see any Supertunia bubblegums outside. That's weird. At least I've had more impatience. These, that bubblegum pink, I was only able to find them in these $13, what are they, eight packs last time? So what, you get 16 of them for $26? Wait, what? No. But they had them down here where you can get the eight packs for four bucks. Fill up a flat of those, so for $20, you get 40. That's a much better deal. And I wanted that to be the primary color, that bubblegum pink. They didn't have enough to fill up two flats, but that's okay. And this, I don't, I just really liked it. It's a fun color. Don't know, I'm not gonna mix it with the others. That'll have to go probably on the front porch somewhere. I just, I like that color. It's like a magenta? I don't know, maybe not magenta. The sun and the lighting might be throwing things off tomorrow. I might hate this one, but I know I like those. Lots and lots of caladiums. Those are gonna be toast in a few days. I guess not. Maybe I'll get them covered. Um, why? Why are these on clearance? 50%? They just need water. Really, just a nice heavy drink? These are fine. Why are they on clearance? Nine bucks a pop, that's better than what I paid for them. Should I get some more? Probably not. I kind of want to though, but I shouldn't. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is this a marmalade? No, close, but not quite. That's a nice looking Dahlia. Not the right one though. These, this, I like these. Red Riding Hood Penstemon. You can see the tag right there. Red Riding Hood. It's a pinkish coral colored flower. Bells that hang down. Don't know how good of a flower these are. As far as repeat blooming goes, I don't want to buy them if they're basically done. The hummingbirds would love this one. Beautiful tubular flowers on long stems and prolific and long-lasting call for perennial borders, rock gardens, and cut flower displays. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Eh. I don't know. I'd like some more information. See, now those, this right here, that, that should be on clearance. Yep, these are nice and also kind of thirsty looking. Very, very thirsty looking. You can tell they've been in the dark for way too long. Looks like the flowers start off more of a reddish color and then fade off into a pink. That or they've just been sitting in the dark for way too long. That one looks good. Look at that one. It's all opened up. You can kind of see the spots inside the blooms if it would focus, which it won't. Ooh. Tons of kale lilies. I think there's going to be way too much sun on this spot I'm thinking about for these though. And I have a bunch of kale lily bulbs I haven't even gotten planted yet, but those are 
I like them. They look nice. Okay, I'm gonna make this quick so it's not creepy and awkward. Look at this hood ornament. Look at that. It's a balloon animal duck. Yeah, clearly not at Lowe's anymore. It got too windy. There was nothing more. Too much noise. I got some more plants though. Just a few roses. Otherwise, you saw everything else while I was in there. He's such a good boy. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. You're such a good boy, Turbs. As you are, there was a duck right in your face. You didn't even go for it. You were like, hey, that's a friend. I'm not going to try and eat it. Was that gross? Is it gross people out when I queen his eye boogies on camera? Such a sweetheart. Yeah, I just sat down out here and a duck went, boom, landed in the pool. And he ran to the edge of the pool. And then he just laid flat and looked at it and then started looking around. I was happy he started looking around because that means he wasn't so fascinated with it or hooked on it that he was having like a prey drive I mean, he's a lab so that's what he would probably want to do is jump in and get the duck but he was just like hey i'm just gonna lay here and watch you don't know if that's what he would have done if i weren't out here but still is a happy moment he's a big peaceful lovey dog the plants okay so here's what i got you already know about the impatience right there's the new ones over there the flat of the kind of bubblegum pink ones to go with the others Glad I have those, because I had mentioned that that was like the main color I wanted to work with with the Impatience this year. The others, more roses. These are the Colorscape's Flamingo Colorscape Landscape Roses. Is that what they're calling them? Their collection of roses. I saw these last year and I wanted to grab some, but wasn't able to find enough of them. Here's the description. Compact, upright shrub thrives in cool water. Well, <laughs> let's try that again. Compact, upright shrub thrives in cool weather as well as heat and drought. Brilliant hot pink double this doesn't have double flowers. Appear over a long bloom season. Self-cleaning continuous bloomer. A classic favorite for landscape focal points. Ideal for growing in small space gardens and patio containers. Sun part shade three to four feet high, two to three feet wide. Zone five to nine. And there's the care instructions. Don't overwater it if it's raining outside. You don't need to do that. Oh, I saw these later in the year last year and wanted to grab some to put in my front yard around the Taylor junipers I planted couple Taylor junipers in the front yard. The reason I like these, other than just I think that the flowers on them just look like the perfect shade of pink, and they're a landscape rose so don't need to do much with them as far as maintenance goes rose-wise, but they have a really nice deep green and glossy foliage on them. These are kind of on the dry side. They're bone dry. They were fresh off the truck when I grabbed them so they need a good watering. I thought that these would look great wrapped around those Taylor junipers, because Taylor junipers, they have a little juniper look to them. They look more dry. They're that lightish gray blue color, which I really do like, but they well, they look dry. I don't really know how else to describe it. Whenever I see Taylor junipers, they go, oh, those are beautiful, but we need something glossy around them with a deep green to help wet <laughs> the look, help lush it up, basically. So that's what these are for. I grabbed three. I actually need six. I'm going to put one like in a triangle, one here, one here, one here, this is here. There's the juniper rose here, rose here, rose here, and a triangle around each one of those junipers. But I couldn't find a flatbed, probably because they were busy unloading the truck, I think they were using them all, and that's fine, it's Lowe's, I'll be back. Grab three more of those. wonder if this, this is a different tag on it. Colorscape Flamingo. See, in this one's picture, it looks more like a double rose, but it doesn't say double flowered in that one's description. Wonder why? Maybe because they're not double flowered? Kind of double, no, no. Am I double short, double flowered? I think that that's a stretch. Being a little bit too generous with the description there. And then you all saw the Red Riding Hood Penstemons. I really, I like these. I think that these would be great back behind me where I talked about before where I want to put the row of arbs and then maybe the apple trees and just have lots of different types of flowers for the pollinators growing up here on top of the hill. Those two hydrangeas that are up there are going to go because well, they're not doing well there. Not doing well at all up there. Actually, it's just too exposed for the macrophyllas. They bloom on old wood and they just die back to the ground every year. So that spot's not working. And yeah, that's it. I'm excited about these. I think these are great. I am curious about the penstemons. I normally put a little bit more research into a perennial when I buy it. But, I don't know, they were just speaking to me. Went ahead and I did it. That's kind of the nature of the beast with that hill area up there. That's how I've mostly planted it, is that's where things go where I want them, and they need a good amount of sun, but they're not going to work anywhere else in the garden. Then usually that's where they go. It's kind of my everything spot in the garden. I don't show it on camera nearly 
as much as I should. That's partially because, well, one, I don't ever go over there. And two, I only put plants up there that are pretty low maintenance plants that don't need much of anything going on with them. But that also means I never go up there and do anything with them. So they don't always look that great. And a lot of them are natives. And the natives at the nurseries around here oftentimes are sold in tiny little two inch containers. So there's just not much to see yet. Some of them hopefully are gonna get some nice size on them this year. That and when I put the apple trees up there, I'm pretty sure that's where I want them to go now that I've put more thought into it. When those go up there with the arbs behind them, I'm gonna be putting down a nice layer of mulch to freshen the area up and might run an irrigation line up there. I'm gonna think about that. I'd rather not do that just because of time and money, but it would probably be beneficial but most of the plants that are up there aren't ones that need a lot of water, except, well, the apples, they'll need some water because they're new trees. Got to keep those hydrated well for their first few years. And then the arbs, those definitely, you know, they're not a drought tolerant plant, especially when you first plant them. Why is there a helicopter flying over? Come on. And yeah, I know the idea of having arbs up there underneath those pine trees probably seems weird to people, but I just don't care. For the past years, I've been complaining about wanting to seal things off and just have a little bit more privacy back here. So I figure, be shut up, stop complaining about it, and do something about it. I think arbs are the way to go. I would like to do the use, the upright use, like the Hicks use, but you know, those are like 70 bucks a pop and up, and they're usually three feet tall. I can get arbs that are much bigger than that for way cheaper, and I want... I'm in kind of an instant gratification mood. And I, I don't mind arms. They're great plants. I Around here, maybe 12 to 15 feet high might be where they max out. Those are probably about 15 to 8. Those are probably about 18 feet tall. So maybe 15 to 20 feet tall. Those are pretty old. They haven't grown much in the last few years. And that would be the perfect size for right back there where I was just talking about. And I don't normally have much of an issue with die-off with arbs in the ground. But that is something to be prepared for usually for every, like... I don't know, 10 arbs that get planted might need to replace one within a few years. It's just, I don't know why. That just seems to be how it goes whenever I plant a lot of them at one time. But they're generally not too expensive. I'm holding off on those. One, because like I mentioned, some feedback would be nice, even though I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it no matter what y'all say. <laughs> but I do appreciate the feedback. And uh, Mother's Day is coming up, and they're going to be on sale, and that'd be a good time to go ahead and stock up on them when they go on sale. I have been toying with the idea of doing an arb line across this entire fence back here it would I, would I think it would look beautiful it'd be a little bit weird and hard to pull off underneath the maple tree but i assume over the years that maple tree it's going to grow i forgot with this camera when you zoom in it messes up the audio so i can't zoom in right now but as that grows be able to limb up the bottom it's just going to be trunk and i'll be glad that there's a screen of some green back there and then I won't care if the hedges in the middle die because I'll have an entire hedged off area by the fence line. Yes, it'd be very expensive and a lot of work, but I think worthwhile. Don't you, what do you, th I think it'd be nice. I think I'd need like 15 to 18 to do that spot up there. I wonder, the spring groves, these are supposed to stay smaller, aren't they? The problem with the Proven Winners plants though is they don't usually come in a larger size and I want bigger plants space 12 to no 25 to 30 feet that's not smaller that's bigger the they're I think a little bit smaller than the green giant that's what I was thinking that not not smaller than just a regular emerald green arborvitae arborvitae whatever you want to call them talking about the same plants here I have a feeling the spring groves are probably pretty vigorous growers too because they've already put on some size and I haven't done anything with them they're just sitting here is decorative plants. What I had planned for those might be changing. Talk about that whenever it's time to talk about it. Yeah, that, well, that's what's going on there. What had me come up with all this randomness was that I was down there messing with the laurel hedge, trying to see how much live wood is on there. It's a lot of dead wood, like a lot of dead wood. There was a lot of encouragement from people saying that they'll flush back out, but they're not going to flush back out of dead wood. So uh, that entire hedge, with the exception of maybe the one in the middle, might be coming out. I don't know yet. I'm going to give it a few more weeks to see what happens, just to be safe, but I'm thinking that hedge is probably toast. And that's what got me thinking about, well, what can I put up here that's actually going to live? It seems like every three to five years I have to try something different on that berm. And then I thought, well, why don't I just screen off the entire fence area so that it doesn't matter what's on the berm and I can have some more fun with it. I'm not a ton of fun because there's not a lot of spot 
spot. Not a lot of sun over there, but I was going to say during the summertime. But I, I mean, I could just put arbs across the berm instead, but that I think that'd be boring. Don't you think that'd be boring? It'd make more sense to do the fence line other than, well, the money part, 18, 15 to 18 of those. That's, that's pretty expensive. And that would fit a garden plan or garden hope that I've had for several years, which would has been, it's getting hard to talk, sorry, to have a row of some sort of hedge go up the fence line and then have a garden bed up on the hill carved out around this oak tree that swoops back down to that mimosa. So there'd be a garden bed up there and that would be a good start to doing that project. It's already gonna be a good start when I start filling in up there on that hill. I'm holding up to wait and see what the neighbors are going to do with their landscaping so we can coordinate together. I don't, you know, I don't want to put anything there that's going to shade their pool or, you know, harsh whatever it is that they want to do with their pool. But I don't know what's going on. The pool construction was supposed to start a long time ago. It hasn't happened yet. So, you know, they don't know yet either what they want to do. So that's going to take time. <laughs> that's what's going on there. Oh, the, um, I got paint, <laughs> fabric paint for this thing over here for the glider. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I figure we'll give it a try. It's a blue that's pretty close to this one right here. At least it looks like it is. I was only able to get two cans of it. So hopefully that'll be enough for that top piece up there. Hopefully we're going to get that scrubbed off and cleaned when the weather's nicer next week. Nicer. Next week's not looking like it's going to be all that great weather-wise. I figure for the lower cushions, I'll just put covers on them or replace them. That'd probably work. I can't imagine that fabric paint is something you can sit on. It won't crack. Right, and covering up red's going to be difficult. I'm interested to see how well that stuff works. I'm skeptical. Anyways, that's enough. The, enough talking. Now, I was about to say got a lot done this week. Really did not. It's kind of been a recovery week for me, personally. It's been a very chaotic couple of weeks. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out. I was going to say hopefully next week we'll get more done out here, but next week, I'm, really, I need to do a lot of shopping and picking up plants. So hopefully be getting things planted here in the near future. I would like to be getting things planted without them piling up. It is fun every year having like my little makeshift nursery of plants to pull from. But everything I have purchased this year, I have already known what I wanted to do with it. So uh, I would like to stay on that track so that I don't come out here one day and just have hundreds of plants scattered out here and then start to get that knot in my stomach of going, oh no, what am I going to do? I have to get these things planted, but don't have the places to put them. So I have to wait for the big palm trees to get delivered from the greenhouse at the end of the month to do a lot of the more tropical type arranging in the containers. Stuff in the ground can handle that. Oh, that was a heck of a reaction. I barely touched the table. That's probably not good for those. I shouldn't do that. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. Having a great day and a great life. And everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Thoughts on the espaliers in that area back there with the arbs. Screening ideas over here. Things that are cheap and will grow very, very quickly. And aren't just going to drop dead like these laurels. Man, that's such a disappointment. But like I said, I'm going to give it a couple more weeks. Maybe three to four more weeks. But it's just... It's not looking good. I've been down there messing with them they most of those are dead but the bamboo is starting to flush back out so that's good if i had to pick between the two i'd much rather the edge be okay than the bamboo but you know, well I'll, I'll take it um when the collar on the umbrella snapped and it came tumbling down it landed right on top of this begonia all right as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye